My next series of videos is going to show you how to make this table. I made this in 2021 for a class I was teaching at Cerritos College. And we would normally make a coffee table that has a stretcher system at the bottom. But because of the COVID shutdown, we simplified things a little bit. I wanted to make something you know, for the class to demonstrate all the procedures and we didn't need another coffee table. So I made this console table. Now you're going to, if you look up console table, I think you're going to find a definition that doesn't quite match this, but to me, this is a console table. It's, you know, we just use it to uh, set near the front of the house by the entry. My wife put some art stuff on it and it's just a, kind of a decorative table. I came up with a design first by determining where it was going to go, the size that we needed for the top, the height of the table. I played around with uh, the taper of the legs and I drew it up in SketchUp. I then made a mock-up out of poplar that was it just screwed together with pocket screws so we could actually see the table in place. And after that, we did a couple of tweaks. I think I changed the taper of the legs a little bit. We messed with the top a bit. And then once we had that squared away, I think we were in good shape. The table's made out of cherry. I had some kicking around, which I'll talk about in the first video. And I think that's it. I do wanna show that the front apron, this is something we teach at the school, uh, notice the grain matches throughout this. So the way we do this is we start with a, a wider piece, we cut it apart, cut out the pieces and glue it back together. So we're going to start off with harvesting the parts. I should note too, if uh, you're interested in the drawing, I think I just have a SketchUp model uh, that's available on my website. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look here. I've got my cut list, my parts, and I want to choose the biggest parts first. Now I've got these roughly in order of how I'm going to be making the project, also in order of the size of the parts. And so everything from part number one to 12 is going to be four quarter material. The legs are eight quarters, so I have them separate. The first part I want to look at, which is the biggest part and the most visible part, is the top. So I'm going to be looking for those parts first. I'll do the uh, aprons next, and the rest of the parts are not quite as critical. One, one thing I need to keep in mind is the uh, drawer front, because of how we're going to be uh, making the uh, front apron. That's actually part of the front apron so I can ignore that part. So let's get started with the top and aprons and we'll move on from there. All right, I have some cherry that I purchased uh, quite a while ago. It was all part of a matched set that I bought from Arion Lumber. So all of these boards, you can see this has a number on it. It's 731 um, and all of these boards have that number on them uh, somewhere. So these all came from the same tree. So that I've got that going for me. The issue I'm having is my top is 13 inches wide and 24 inches long. If I measure uh, this board, it's about 13 and a quarter inches. Uh, same, same for this one. This one's a little bit narrower. But the, the problem with this board is it has some uh, cracks, which you won't be able to see in the video here, but there's some cracks coming down the middle of it. it looks like about from here down and yeah, on this side, yeah, the cracks start about here and go down. Now, if it was a, a pretty consistent crack in the middle, uh, what I've done in the past is is just sawn, sawn that material out and put the board back together. But it's not very consistent. Um, it's not along the uh, cathedrals. It's offset from the cathedrals. You, if it's right centered on the cathedrals or close to it, that makes it a little easier to do that process. 
plus I've got some sapwood here that I really want to avoid. And as I come down here where the sapwood's not, um, that's where the cracks are. So this board would, would not work well for, for my top. This one uh, might work. Um, I've still got some issues here. There's some pretty big cracks at the top there. There's a knot here that uh, is not on this side, but I've got a little bit of sapwood here, sapwood coming in here. But this, this, like I said, this is 13 and a quarter. And if in a pinch, I would actually change the design and make the top a little bit narrower if I needed to. So I think I'm going to get my top from from this end. I'll, I'll clear the uh, check or the crack over here, get rid of that, and then come down 24. That's going to put me roughly in this range. I think I can just barely clear the sapwood um, because this knot's here. I don't want the knot, so I'll probably make this the bottom and I think I can make that uh, happen. So sometimes, depending on the material that you've got, yeah, it's going to make you work a little harder. If if this board was narrower than I wanted, let's say it was 11 or 12 inches, what I would typically do in that situation is cut cut my length. Um, but of course, it's going to be a little too narrow. But then I would cut some strips off the edge further down the board and then glue them on either side. And since, you know, this grain towards the outer part of the board is fairly straight and it's obviously from the same board, uh, you can usually get that to match up pretty well. So that's a, that's a good way to widen a board. Of course, the other option, um, if I had a narrower board, um, you know, if this was a little more than half of my 13 inch width, so that would be six and a half. I could cut two lengths of this and, and glue these together. But the problem with this, it's only six inches. So that doesn't work with this. I'd have to scab in a third piece, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to uh, work this board a little bit and get my top out of, out of here. <laughs> All right, that didn't work out quite as well as I had hoped. Um, I had to take more off the end of the board than I expected. So what, what I did, what I was planning to do, I cleared the end of the board to where I thought I had a pretty good uh, intact material there. But then I measured over. I didn't want to just cut the crack off because I would have had such a short piece, it wouldn't have helped me. So I, I went over the amount that I needed um, for my uh, side apron. So they uh, finish out at uh, 10 and a quarter. So I cut, I cut this board at about 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half. So I can get my two side aprons from this, you know, what would have been an off cut. So what happened though is when I did that, <clears throat> that moved my top down far enough to where now I don't really have, I'm not really clear of the uh, sapwood anymore. So it's, it's gotten pretty narrow here. And you know, I could turn this over, but now I've got this knot to deal with, which I don't, I don't want. I may, 
see how this works out, but uh, I, th I think I'm going to want this side. So my plan is to rip the edges off of here <clears throat> and do what I had said earlier, which was then take a piece off of here, you know, which is essentially the same material. So what I can do here is cut this to the length of my top, rip these uh, edges off so that I can glue them on this other piece. And then the rest of this will be long enough, plenty long enough for my front and back aprons. Um, they're three and a quarter wide. Um, the back apron, uh, I can live with three and a quarter, just over three and a quarter. The front apron, because I'm going to be ripping it apart and gluing it back together to create the drawer front, I, uh, I need some extra material there. So I'll, I'll adjust accordingly here. These are pretty symmetric, but if one of these is a little wider than the other, I'll use that for the front. I, I've got plenty of material here, so I, I think that's going to work out okay. On the uh, top piece, I trimmed off the edges that I wanted to get rid of, and I had, I, I had to trim off a little more than I thought because it turned out there was a little bit of uh, rot or something on this side. So I cut into where there, the wood started to lighten up just a little bit right here. There was a light streak there. I just cut off basically the sapwood on this side. And then um, from this, this is the board that I'm going to use for my, uh, my front and rear aprons. So I've sawn off material off either side. And that's going to go on like that. And... Uh, that kind of lighter streak kind of shows up there. So I think that's going to be okay. And I, you know, I got to realize that, uh, you know, cherry darkens up over time and things tend to even out. And remember this, this board came from right here. So it's, it should be very similar in color. So there's, there's my top. So at this end, it's uh, about 13 and a half, right? I'm shooting for 13. This end I've got uh, 14 and a half, so I'll be cutting this end down a little bit. The rest of this I will use uh, this side for the uh, rear apron and this side for the front apron. They're going to finish out at three and a quarter, so I'll cut this one at three and a half, and then I'll just probably just take whatever I get over here. Um, just to maximize the width that I can then, you know, rip and get my drawer front out of. So I think, uh, I think it's going to work out just fine. Now, as I'm looking at this uh, piece for my uh, side aprons, I turned it over and noticed this is that kind of funky wood that I was had to trim off of, of this other part here. So, like I said, I'm going to come in. I'll just draw a line on here that's that's parallel, roughly parallel to the grain. Same thing on this side. So I will, I'll cut those on the band saw, joint the edges just to get them straight, and then I'll rip three and a, three and a half from each side. Now that, that way I'll miss this big check that's there. Okay, so I've got the aprons cut. I've got the two side uh, aprons roughed out. This is the rear apron. And the front apron, like I said, is uh, a little bit wider because I'm going to be cutting it up and then gluing it back together. So that's the front apron and the drawer front. And then I've got my top. So one thing I'd like to do on my... Uh, cut list 
is is check off the parts that I have roughed out. So I'm there's only one of these, so I'm gonna put a check mark there. There's my front apron. Got that. The back apron, there's one of those. And the two, there's two side aprons, so I'm gonna put two check marks there. So when I'm done harvesting my parts, I expect to see the number of check marks on each side that match up with these numbers. That takes care of the, the I'll say the primary parts, the parts that are most visible. The rest of these are not going to be seen, um, with the exception of the legs. So I'll do those next, and then the rest of these I'll just use whatever I have. Now you may have noticed that the material I'm using is uh, figured cherry. It's got some some curve or, or wave pattern to it. For you know these uh, the drawer support, the runners, this, you know the the sides of the drawers, things like that. I don't need figured material for that. So if I have some plain cherry, I'm going to grab that. I've got various bits and pieces of stuff kicking around here. So I'll save my good stuff for the things that are going to be seen. For the legs, they are, check out here, 31 and a quarter long. And I had uh, roughed this out the other day. I should have plenty of material here. Yeah. So I'll cut this. Uh, I've still got a, a factory end here, so I know this is my good my good end. So I'll cut from here uh, an inch bigger than that, about 32 and a quarter, something like that. And then I should have, um, all I need is, yeah, eight inches here. I've got a little over nine. So I will cut four pieces um, that are you know roughly this thickness, about two inches wide. So I have uh, my four legs, each roughly two by two. And I'll, then I'll be able to put four uh, check marks there and we'll finish up the rest of the parts uh, as needed. Okay, so that roughs out my legs. I'm seeing, you know, this looks a lot lighter than this, but uh, these boards have been kicking around my shop for at least 15 years. So uh, if we look at the inside of the board, it looks uh, pretty close. So, and, and cherry darkens up over time, so I think it's going to be fine. So I have the four legs roughed out now, so I can check those off. And... Uh, I will continue to rough out uh, the rest of the stuff. Now I could, I could actually wait and do these later. Um, kind of up to you. It depends on what the storage situation is and uh, you know how how much you want to do now. You could let it sit. Um, I, in general, tend to kind of rough everything out early on and then pick and choose the parts as uh, as I need them. Now, the one thing I should also point out. I need to know what these parts are. So I've got the uh, part numbers over here. And a big reason I do that is I can now mark these with that number. Now, if I wrote the number on the face of the part, as soon as I mill this, it's going to disappear. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it on the end of the board. So this is my front apron. So I'm going to put a two on each end. Uh, back apron is three and so forth. So I'll go ahead and mark all these parts and uh, as they get milled uh, up until I cut them to length, I'll still know what uh, what part is what.